What's up guys? The reason I'm making this video is when I was making a decision to buy this thing or not, I was trying to find good reviews and tutorials on how to get it running. And then when I got it, I was trying to figure out a good video on how to stabilize it because I could not find one. Now let's get into the pros and cons. So the first pro that, that I can think of is it's super simple. It's a motorized gimbal, it's on a battery, and it works great. Um, I had a glide cam before and I tried it. Honestly, I suck at glide cam. So there's people that go either way. There's people that say, oh, glide cam is the way to go because there's no batteries and it's super manual, it's old school. That's great, that's awesome for me. I hate glide cam. Well, I don't hate them. They're great, but um, I, I like this better, it's easier. It's almost balanced every time that, that, I, that I set it up and I turn it on and it's ready to go. Pro number two is the battery life. The battery life on this thing is ridiculous. And when I bought it, I didn't know that it came with two batteries. If I would have known that, I wouldn't have bought a third because now I have a third one that just kind of lays around and does nothing because on a shoot, you literally will go through one battery. You won't even touch the second battery depending on, on how long you shoot. But these batteries last an insane amount of time and I was really super impressed with that. Pro number three is with electronic gimbals like this one is since it has motors, it will actually ca uh, counteract uh, different weights. So which means if you have a zoom lens, say if you have, uh, like I've used Canon on here before, if you have a Canon and you have like the 24 to 70 on it, uh, and if you want to zoom in, zoom out, this will counteract that weight and will keep sta stabilization. The first con that I can come up with, and there's no way getting around it, it's gonna be this way with any kind of gimbal that you get, manual or electronic, is it sucks. The first time you get it, it's gonna suck setting it up. But once you get it, once you figure it out, it just gets easier and easier to stabilize. So that was, <laughs> That was the biggest first con that, that, I, that I found out. Con number two is the stand. Uh, if you see any review, everybody complains about this. It is the worst design ever. There is no stand. If you're on a shoot for a while, this thing gets tiring. I mean, it, it, get, it gets pretty heavy. It's, it's pretty light as it is, but this thing will get tiring and you're gonna wanna put it down. And when you wanna put it down, you have to go find the stand. Uh, you, it's, and it's not fun to just carry around with you. The third con I can think of, but really doesn't pertain, pertain to me anymore because I have the Sony a7S II, which is a smaller mirrorless camera. Uh, when I first started shooting on this, I was shooting uh, with a, a Canon camera. It was a, a 5D Mark II, and there wasn't much room on the sides here um, to, to put your cable in because the cable was down far. The, the HDMI input was down far on the camera. So it was hard and I had to, I had to find a, a right angle HDMI adapter to be able to fit that in there. Uh, with this, with, with the Sony, the, there's, there's no issue with that because it's up higher. I do not have a monitor on top of it right now because I'm actually using it to see what I'm doing, but I usually have a monitor on here. And right now I am shooting with the Atomos Ninja Flame. All right, let's set this thing up. So now that I got that out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just basically reset and just mess up all the settings I have and just stabilize this from the get-go to show you exactly what I did to learn how to get this thing stabilized. So let's go. I mounted my Manfrotto plate. To the, uh, to the DJI plate. And if you look here, I'm gonna try to zoom in on that. But that's the, that's the slot that I used right there. Uh, so I used that middle slot and I went all the way to the back with the screw, to the back of that slot, all right? And then with, with the uh, plate on the bottom of my camera, I slid it all the way forward. Now it's gonna be different for every single camera. I'm just showing you what it would look like for an A7S II. I slid the plate all the way forward and tighten it down there. Actually, I really didn't tighten it down this time, but when I'm in the field, I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, uh, the base plate here and slide it in. And I'm just gonna lock it down right there. And then I'm going to slide my camera in from the back. And I'm just going to make it flush right here. I'm gonna make the plate flush with the quick release mount. Tighten that sucker up. Try to balance it, the camera straight up and down, just like this. So, but just looking at it, if you see like, if you see it, it it's really tilting. So before I go any further, I just wanna make it tilt that way a little more. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do that first. 
So loosen those up, slide to the right. And at the beginning, you're gonna do you're gonna do bigger increments, and then you're gonna get smaller. So if you look, I just did like maybe like a half inch, and it made it a lot more uh, level there. So I'm gonna just tighten those guys up right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I want to get it to to bounce straight up and down. So I'm gonna try this out, and it's going it's going backwards right away. So it just keeps going back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew the this quick release plate. Well, the the plate here, and I'm gonna slide the camera forward and it's still leaning backwards. So we're gonna slide it forward a little more and it's still leaning backwards. And I'm gonna keep doing it until I get it. So look, that's pretty, that's not bad right there. That's not bad right there. Um, so I'm gonna keep it just like that. The camera looks pretty level. Uh, it looks pretty level on the, uh, the X and the Y axis right now. It's not bad, but we're gonna go back and do fine increments later. So the next thing I wanna do is do, uh, I want it to get, uh, get it leveled out this way, okay? And the way you do that is by these side adjustments right here. So I'm going to do bigger increments at first, and I'm just gonna mess with it until it's, it looks okay. So it's starting to go backwards there, but now, it's start, now the whole thing's starting to tilt to the right if you see that, like that. So I'm actually gonna go to the left a little bit with it. And that was too much. Again, fine increments. And I forgot one other tip. One other tip is you wanna make sure that you have the camera exactly how you're gonna want it when it's stabilized. So this means have your battery in. This means have your memory card in. This means have your lens cap off. Exactly how you're gonna have it when you're shooting is how you want it when you're stabilizing it. So we're gonna look at it like that. So it's still tilting forward just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna start doing uh, the small increments, okay? All right, so I got it level right there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it back up here and see if that still looks good. It still looks good right there. And the goal is to get it to be able to stay at any point that you put it, okay? So it stays right there, it stays right there, and it stays straight up and down like that, okay? And the closer that you get it, the better stabilized footage that you will get. All right, so that looks pretty good to me and I'm, I'm happy with that. So the next thing you wanna do is do the tilt axis. So uh, you wanna do this lever up top here. My, this version has the, uh, has the, the wheel there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going forward just because I know it needs to go forward. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tilt this whole thing forward and see how it, it turned, the, the whole gimbal turned to the left there. Uh, we want it to stay exactly where it's at. Uh, so that means it needs to go forward a little, a little bit more. And you just gotta keep messing with this until you have it right. So if you see there, see how it's holding right where it is? It's not turning to, to the side. That's exactly where you want it. Then you just wanna go back through all your different, uh, different ways of stabilizing and just make sure it's still good. Because now that I messed up the tilt axis, this axis is gonna be messed up now. So I have to go back and, and fix that. So now you have the basics of doing that. I'm just gonna skip a little bit forward and, and, then, and then you can, you can figure it out from there. So the next thing that you wanna do is open up your DJI Assistant app right here. And you're gonna open it up and then you're gonna to wanna to connect to uh, your Ronin. So if you see right there, it has my name. So I'm gonna click right on my Ronin because I already set this up. And it's gonna connect and you hit okay there. So then the first thing that I do is I go over here to the more tab. So the first thing that I always do is I go ahead and I calibrate the system. So the second thing I do is I go back to the gimbal menu over here and I go to motor and then I go ahead and I hit auto tune stability. And then that's really just gonna read all the different motors, the three different motors. If you look down here, all the numbers are changing and it's looking at the different power ratings that it needs to give to each motor to make the thing stabilize. So I'm not gonna go into any more of the settings there for that, uh, cause there's plenty of videos out there on YouTube explaining that. Um, but th I just wanted to help you guys get up and running there. So here's some footage I got with the Ronin over the past couple months. I did some weddings, I did a music video and a few other projects, so check it out. <music>
So that was my first gear review. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if there's anything you think I can improve on, uh, put it in the comments below. If you liked what I did, if you want to see more of this, please hit the like button down below and hit the subscribe button. That would, that would be huge to get those subscribers up. If you're interested in checking out the, the gear that I have, in the description there's a link to my kit. It's kit.com and it'll show you all the stuff that I use. And if you, if you hit the link there and you actually purchase uh, one of the things that, that I use, I will actually get a small commission, which helps me out, which is, which is pretty cool. So until next time, that was the first gear review. We're out.